A very good afternoon and you're welcome to Kenny Park in Athen Rye, the venue for today's first round a clash in the Glen Dimplex Senior Camogie Championship. It's the Division 1 clash of the Galway, the home team, and the visiting team, Cork. Both teams, of course, met in this year's league final in Crow Park just over seven weeks ago with the Galway team coming out on top on that occasion. We are certainly looking forward to what should be a wonderful occasion here in uh, Kenny Park in Athen Rye as a big crowd making its way in. The conditions have to be said, are absolutely perfect. Sweltering heat, temperatures in the mid to high 20s here in the Galway venue. And uh, both sides uh, looking forward to the first opening round clash. Uh, earlier, we caught up with uh, both respective managers. First, firstly, we caught up with the Cork manager, Matthew Toomey. for Cork Camogie uh, made long journey up here to uh, Athen Rye today in the sunshine first round of the championship I suppose it stays like this that be, you've been preparing for all year 100% yeah yeah. we're really looking forward to it um, we've really got a lot of work done now since the, um, the Munster Championship um, so we're look, I suppose we're up against the best team in the country at the moment now, so we just want to see where we're at you played them twice already this year um, first game was in Parky Keefe a home game for you they needed to win they got the win and then the league final of course it could have gone anyway in the end but it was a great I suppose spectacle and a great advertisement for Camogie Absolutely, I think all the games against Galway, like they're the same. Like I, I we're hoping today be something similar as well. That's you not know, there's always kind of a pocket of ball between us and a breaking ball. So like we're just looking now to try and if, if, see. Hopefully we get a bit of luck our way this time. It's been a number of weeks since that league final. How have preparations gone? Are you pulling from a pull panel this weekend? No, we've uh, we've both six or seven injuries now at this stage. Um, we had a bit of bad run of it, but look, we're very happy about the quality we have out in the field and what we have to come on as well. That's what you've a panel for. Like I'm sure God, we are the same with a few injuries as well. But no, we're, we've no complaints that side of things. To you know after the game, that's you. Thanks for coming to us. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Thanks. Cahill, seven weeks or more since the league final but this is championship action here today first round of the Glint Impix Senior Hurling Cha Camogie Championship and uh, Cork coming to town yeah look at Cork coming to town it's always going to be a big one and um, look we're looking forward to it you know we've had nothing now for, for seven weeks so we're a long time kind of waiting for this and have this in our minds but um, look at it it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant occasion and it's a nice crowd here a brilliant day so yeah looking forward to it tough group uh, group one this year also contains Clare and Down who are playing as we currently speak but uh, I suppose for both sides here it's trying to get a good performance initially but uh, to get a win here today for yourselves it would be crucial going forward yeah listen it's, it's not to be on a Lindahl well today look at a win is going to set up the whoever wins it is going to set them up for the for the rest of the championship you know what I mean but like you don't want to lose today you have a tough game in two weeks time down in Clare so look it's, we're hoping for performance and um, look at if we get the performance hopefully we're good enough I'll wish you best of luck thanks Tom thanks Tommy Yeah, both uh, captains in the middle of the field there. Sean Healy, the uh, captain for Galway from Ardrahan, and Amy O'Connor, the captain of Cork from St. Vincent. So the toss has been made. I don't think it'll make too much difference which way sides are playing at the start of this game. There is a little bit of a breeze blowing from left to right as we look out from our commentary position here, which is... Uh, if it's warm out on the pitch, it's absolutely sweltering here in the commentary position as well. And delighted to be joined on co-commentary for today's game by Imelda Hobbins. Imelda, talk about um, the perfect occasion for the first round of a championship, but it really is up on the high end of a hot here in Kenny Park. This is their third time to meet in a row, I suppose, if you like, between the league and now the first round of the championship. So, of course, the league is well and truly, I suppose, in the past now, Tammy, and it's all down to the championship. You mentioned that league final. It's over seven weeks ago now since Galway and Cork played in Crow Park. 
Um, Galway wouldn't have had a lot of uh, opportunities to play good, hard challenge matches in that length of time, whereas Cork were involved in the Munster Championship. So maybe it might just say that you know the visiting side here today, Cork, have more competitive games got in that Munster Championship. Galway relying on one or two challenge matches here and there. Yeah, and I suppose it's just the way the Championship goes indeed for Galway. They do miss out on that competition, if you like, coming up to the first round of the Championship. And you know I'm sure they've done everything they can to get in the few games. A lot of interest, I suppose, shown on Cork today. Probably feel that they didn't perform in the league final. You know, the last group game, I suppose, of the league was different for them. They were true anyway, but we, all, I suppose, we had all anticipated a better performance from Cork in the league final. So I think we're going to see some of that here today. Speaking to Matthew Toomey, the uh, Cork manager earlier, he said his side is minus six or seven key players. You know, between injury and other various different reasons but uh, looking at that Cork team there's still a strong team here today in Kenny Park and Atten Ryan there's one change uh, Sirka McCartan from St Finbars is replaced by number 18 Katrina Mackey from Douglas we believe so we'll have to wait till the throw in to see exactly if there are any more changes we have seen that in the past where managers will make last minute decisions and you know might be just watching one or two girls out there to see if they're fully fit yeah and you don't know what kind of injuries I suppose creep up as well before before the big DM managers and they have to do a short call but Katrina Mackey I suppose well experienced there so I don't think there'll be any doubt for Cork with her coming in there as number 15. The man in charge is Ray Kelly in the middle of the field as a, an experienced referee in Melda as well. He's refereed a lot of high-profile games over the last number of years as well in Camogie Championship and League. And uh, he's a referee that uh, both Cork and Galway will know very well. Absolutely. You know, and I suppose today, we know when you have two top teams like Cork and Galway coming together and the conditions are fabulous here today, you'd like to see the game let go, let the game flow. Obviously, safety comes first always for, for the referee. But, you know, hopefully he let the game flow and we'll have a... Ex- what he's expected a cracker of a game here yeah, for the first round really, of the championship. really looking forward to that. But I suppose... One thing we'll say about the heat is it's probably in both sides' favour that they have had maybe seven to ten days of this kind of weather and a build up to it because if you were suddenly hit with 25, 26 degrees temperature for a championship match all of a sudden, and then that causes its own problems. But the girls have got a chance maybe to climatise a little bit to it, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of water runners out there as well today. Yeah, you know, in a lot of sports, I suppose, you know, you'd see where they would be, I suppose, heading to their venue ahead, weeks ahead, to get ready for the likes of this, where I suppose, Camogie, in fairness, you just have to be ready on the day and what comes up. And, you know, they've had a run up to it, they've had the sunshine. I suppose a hard ground is going to be a factor as well, of course, after all the the fine days that we've had. I suppose the biggest thing for me is under the helmets, you know, the heat of those helmets today, I think they will they will suffer. But look at again, it's all about keeping the water in and giving them a chance. We mentioned the other two teams in this group as well, Imelda, Cork, uh, are Clare and Down, who've already played. Their game is over today. That was their opening game. And Clare winning there by five points. So that puts them in a nice position. They play Galway next in two weeks' time. But both of these sides, Cork and Galway, will be looking you know, to get a good start to the championship. And I suppose a win is imperative for both of these sides. They don't want to be under pressure in the next round of the championship. Yeah, you know, and I suppose the pressure is on both these teams already because they would be picked out I suppose as two of the top teams in the you know up there I suppose with the, the top three of Kilkenny as well you know a lot of people will be looking at Galway and Cork you know Clare sit nicely now with a win and you know it's important I think too to get your to get a win for your first game because it does give you a bit of security We look back at that league final it was, it was a great game great advertising for Camogie as well in Crow Park does it mean much today is it Galway feel that they have you know one up on Cork or a couple up on Cork or Cork feel like that our day is going to come and we want to come here to Galway's venue in that and right today and put one up on the Galway team. Yeah, I suppose it probably has created a bit of a hunger here for the Cork side and, and you know, I'd say they would have been looking they would have been looking to win the league final, they would have liked to win the league final because it would have given their younger players and that a little bit of confidence boost coming into the championship. But I think it will create a huge hunger for Cork, the fact that they will feel maybe they've left that behind. And Galway on the other side I think they'll be very happy with their second half performance in Crow Park and I'd say they've been building on that. And again, you know, we have to remember that there's young players on the Galway side as well, which that confidence of the league final will stand to them today. We'll pause now for our Ron Levine here in Kenny Park. Stand practically full on the far side of the field here in Kenny Park. Big crowd 
on the terraces down in front of us as well and behind the goal down to our right hand side of the called the dressing room end of Kenny Park and Athenry. The pitch an absolutely resplendent condition here in Athenry, it has to be said. Hats off to the groundsmen and those who have prepared this pitch over the last number of months. It does get a lot of wear and tear throughout the year, but right now for championship action here in Kinney Park, it's an absolutely perfect condition. Just look out at the sides and it seems to me that Galway will play with the aid of that little bit of breeze melt in this first half from left to right. It's not an awful lot, but um, it certainly will be blowing into the Galway forwards' faces down to the right-hand side. Yeah, and in fairness, I suppose for Galway, it will be an advantage... You know have that little bit of a breeze that is there we'll settle the you know get a few early scores we'll settle them into the first game bang on cue at five o'clock here in Athen Rye referee Ray Kelly with the ball in the hand about to get the Glen Dimplex division one clash between Cork and Galway underway the ball is in the game is on as uh, trying to get down on it there for Galway with Sarah Spellman she's fouled in the middle of the field the referee says that's going to be free and an opportunity early on for Carrie Dolan the Claridge sharpshooter uh, to take this free right bang centre of the middle of the field that little bit of a breeze will help her so You'd imagine she gets a strike on this. It's about guiding this towards the post for Galway. The opening chance then of this eagerly anticipated clash between two Camogie giants, Galway and Cork. Carrie Dolan for Galway strikes this one in towards the post. It's high. The umpires are having a quick look at it. They're happy enough to go for the white flag. Galway get the opening score. And inside the opening 40 seconds, Galway take the lead. Yeah, good start there for Galway. Carrie Dolan, of course, a fantastic campaign in the league. Carrie had very accurate on her freeze and started off very well here today. Puck out then for the first time from the Pierce's Amy Lee. Over the far side, nice little pop pass in towards the centre there, towards Saoirse McCartney from Corsi Rovers. Gets ball, got a little bit of flick on it. Anya Kane, who seemed to have gone back in the half-back line for Galway at the start of this game, gets it out towards the uh, point scorer, carried on and having a look at the post, decides not to go for it, sends it in towards the uh, full forward inside. As that's uh, Siobhan McGrath, there's a touch in that, but it's gone out to the right-hand side and wide. First wide of the contest, but uh, just looking at Galway's set-up, it looks like that Anya Kane has gone back into the half-back line as uh, Cork spread the ball over on the far side of the field. A lot of players not aware for that uh, delivery. One who was was Roisin Black from the more and more Mary club for Galway. Out goes towards Emma Hellebert at centre-back. Emma now on the far sideline sees the ball come off her stick. The lines person on the far side of the field is Liz Dempsey and that will be first sideline cut of the day and it'll come to the visitors, Cork. Cork thinking about taking a short one it's flicked across towards Fiona Keating Keating does well now to return the pass over towards Chloe Sigerson and into the centre it comes towards Hannah Looney Looney now going on a solo run over on the far side of the field down to the goal on her left still going forward Galway not coming out to meet her she's still going takes another step inside the referee says play on Roisin Black has to get a touch there Dervla Higgins for Galway there to try and mop up the pieces in the early stages here just in, gone past the second minute in Kenny Park and at the right Dervla Higgins coming out with the ball put under all sorts of pressure there by the Cork girls and uh, it's a little bit of a schmozzle developing Galway trying to get down over it Cork there too and Cork have won it and released the ball out to the far side of the field a chance for Chloe Sigerson to level it up from out the field high Chloe Sigerson sends it in and sends it over the bar excellent score there Galway taking too much out of the ball Cork taking the uh, chance to gather possession and Chloe Sigerson gets her first and Cork's first point great score there by Chloe Sigerson and in fairness you'd have to say that probably Cork well deserved that after a great run from Hannah Looney which broke down in fairness to Galway defence were very quick to clear the ball but Chloe Sigerson there getting a fabulous point Fiona Ryan then with her first puck out gets it down here towards the uh, centre half back from Killeen Laura Tracy and Tracy switches the point of attack over the far side of the field good ball towards Chloe Sigerson who looks lively in the opening stages here for Cork lovely ball in over the top the Galway corner back and captain Sean O'Hilly lost the sight of that one and now the chance is for the uh, Katrina Mackey yeah, that's a great score if it goes up and over the bar it is a good score the number 18 getting Cork second score Cork hitting back to Galway's opening point Cork lead two points to one and Katrina Mack will be very happy with that, getting on the scoreboard so early, just coming on, I suppose, on the line-out of this team just before the throw-in, if you like, to, or so to speak. Yeah, she kept her cool and took her score very well. Again, the puck out comes down this side of the field. Cork win the puck out for the second time in a row. And the ball sent up along the line-out towards the corner forward, Amy O'Connor, the captain of Cork. As I go with trying to get their bodies in over that to shield it, Cork in there as well, trying to come out. It was Dervla Higgins seemed to be pulling there. Referee says play on as the ball is flicked away there by Cleona Healy. Very close to the sideline down to her left hand side. Arnie Kane tried to get a touch on it there, but it's Cork now leading by two points to one. Driving forward through Laura Tracy, be put under pressure, but skips past her marker. And now Cork are in here. An opportunity for Cork to get another score. Well blocked down, however, by the Galway defence. 
Referee says play on again. There's no foul there as Dervla Higgins one handed pulls the ball away, but Cork are alert to every break. The referee is going to give a free out against the Cork girl who will feel probably a little bit aggrieved with that one, just turned into the tackle. And uh, Galway will get the free. The Galway player should be fine, should be able to get up. And as you can see straight away, Imelda, there's water going onto that pitch, left, right and centre out there. And that is, you know, we're only four and a half minutes into the game, but even that amount of game time already is seeing the players suffering a little bit yeah, from dehydration. As you can see as the game started here, you know, it has started off very fast and it's pretty, in- it's pretty intense out there. So I suppose every break that comes now, we will see the water people getting on the pitch. Play will resume then with a free for Galway to be taken by centre half back Emma Hellebert. Just back inside her own 45 metre line, decides to go along with this one. In around the house it goes. Referee spotted a foul by Neve Hanafy, I think it was in there. Aoife Dunahu there, who's uh, claiming what happened there as the uh, free is taken by Laura Tracy over to the far side of the field it goes. Up they go for two players, Cork and Galway breaks towards Sabina Rabbit. Sabina now looking to uh, walk the ball forward, takes it off the right and sends it over the side towards the Galway full forward, Siobhan McGrath, just back from injury over the last couple of months, trying to uh, take on the uh, Cork fullback Libby Coppinger, who is uh, well up for the contest as Galway's Neve Hanafy now picks it up from the break, looking for a pass outside, it comes to... Uh, Carry Dolan, Dolan going forward, the referee says that's a foul, and the uh, Cork player taking no liberties there on that occasion, thou shalt not pass, was the uh, mm-hmm. motto from Libby Coppinger, and uh, the referee, Ray Kelly, happy enough just to give the free, and the free will come out to the 21 metre line, practically on the sideline down to our right hand side, difficult angle, Imelda, for even the best sharpshooter, you know, one of the best in the country at the moment. Absolutely, and fairness to Carrie, you know, the fact that she has already scored will give her the confidence, I suppose, for this one, but there's no doubt about it, it's a, a very, very difficult angle. Referee Ray Kelly produces the yellow card then after six minutes to Libby Coppinger for that uh, tackle on the goal with forward. So the free will result, or the free is a, the resulting play for Carrie Dolan now to have the opportunity to try and level it up here again in Kenny Park and Anthony Wright. Lifts and strikes it, strikes it towards the post. It looks good from here. The umpires will go for the white flag. That's a very good point from a very difficult angle by Carrie Dolan. Manages somehow to squeeze it between the post. Six and a half minutes gone, go with get the equaliser. Yeah, and in fairness to Carrie, you know, even if she stood over that, she just seemed to use in confidence and I suppose in her ability. And a great score there by Carrie Dolan for goal. Again, Cork alerts this time to their own puck out. Loads of space in the middle of the field now for the centre half forward, Lord Tracy, who loves to run at defences. This time gives a lovely little pass in towards Amy O'Connor. O'Connor looking lively at the start here. Sends the ball in over the top now. It's one on one in there. Roshin Black being stood up. And Katrina Manick Mackey goes for a point, strikes it in, strikes it up and over the bar. Cork regain the lead. Quickly, scores coming thick and fast here in Kenny Park and at the rise. Seven minutes gone, and Katrina Mackey gets her second. So you can see the reason she was brought in there, Imelda, uh, wasn't named on the start in 15, but uh, in from the start. Absolutely, and in fairness, any ball that has gone in, I suppose there's only been two in fairness to her, gone into Katrina Mackey. You can see the way she steadies, eyes up where she is. She's thinking score all the time. Neve Hanafy sees her attempted pass blocked down, and Cork again looked like the team that have settled the better into this game. Laura Tracy going forward. Lovely crossfield ball by Laura. Touchdown there at centre half forward. Galway with bodies in there trying to uh, get that ball away. And in the end, it's picked up by the Galway wing back, Siobhan Garner. Lovely ball in over the top. Too much on it, I'd imagine, from here. That goes out over the sideline on the far side of the field. It'll be a sideline ball to Cork. But um, as we can see, uh, Galway now have Anya Kane, as we said at the beginning, as a uh, we are over on the far side for the sideline, and it's Cork that take it. Moving it between the hands, happy enough to uh, move it and move it over this side of the field where there's a lot of space over here. And this ball is going to stay in play just about. Picked up here by the midfielder, Hannah Looney. Looney met up by a, a little bit of a shoulder there from Galway's Carry Dolan. But again, it's a cross field ball that Cork are continuing to use. And it seems to be paying dividends for them in the early stages here. They lead by three points to two. As a crossfield ball again, as this direction has changed again by Saoirse McCarthy. Now there's an opportunity here for Mackey again. Katrina Mackey drops it in as uh, Fiona Ryan thought twice about maybe getting a touch on that. It just kind of deflected out to the right-hand side at the very end. So it's the first wide for Cork. Galway with one wide, but Cork leading 3-2, and we play just coming up in nine minutes. Yeah, in fairness, you can see Cork's game already, I suppose, here, Tammy. They're, it's all about keeping possession. As you said, they're playing the cross-field ball, they're holding on to possession, and it's all about getting the ball into their forward to get the scores over. Jervla Higgins now with a delivery in towards the full forward, but again, Cork 
have bodies in front there, and they seem to be doing that. Put them in in front of Siobhan, Siobhan McGrath, just not allowing the ball to be delivered in. Here's a good win now by Fiona Keating. Up the field she goes. Lovely ball in over the top. Cork have players free here. Lovely pass here. This is an opportunity for Amy O'Connor. Goes forward. Still going forward. Tries to get the ball across. Galway do well to uh, work that out at the expense of a 65. As a Galway player goes to ground, I think it's Sean Healy that's in there, but... Uh, Goal chance there just for one moment uh, for Cork. If the pass had got off, you thought that uh, they were in there. And if Cork get a goal in this game, you know, they really will be happy because we've only played hardly 10 minutes yet and they are by far the better team here today so far. Yeah, yeah. And, they, you know, Cork have, I suppose, taken up the running game and they can see there they're absolutely shredding the goal we have back line to, to shreds, I suppose, at this stage. And, and in fairness... But you have to hand it up there to the Galway, the full back line for the Galway team. Shawna Healy is down there injured, but she absolutely committed herself there. And if she didn't, I think Cork would have ended up with a goal. Galway, it must be said, if they look to the likes of Aoife Donoghue and Emma Hellebert and you know, some of the more experienced players on this team carry, have seen little of Eilish O'Reilly and Siobhan McGrath so far in this game. So Cork have obviously done their homework on these, uh, you know, so-called star players who go away and uh, they're holding them very quiet at the moment. Yeah, and I think as, as, as we mentioned earlier, you know, Cork, is, their game is just holding on to possession and they're just not letting go. We have a chance to get near the ball. They're holding on to it and they're absolutely 100% trying to make sure they get a score off, off each attack, I suppose, Tommy. With go, you have yet to come into the game and, you know, I suppose all it takes is one break, but you do need the likes of Aoife Dunham there to mention Neve Hannafy and those girls are supposed to raise the bar there in the centre of the field and start getting some ball into Javon McGrath. I'll match you to me. The Cork manager certainly be happy enough with the way it's panned out in the early stages here as they hit the 11 minute mark. It's the 45 for Amy O'Connor, the Cork captain, to try and give Cork a two point advantage playing into the scoreboard end here in Kenny Park and Athen Wright. As uh, she lifts and strikes, which should be well within her compass as she strikes this one towards the post. Makes no mistake, Cork go 4 2 ahead. A first point for the uh, Cork captain as well, Amy O'Connor. She guides that 45, no problem whatsoever, over the uh, crossbar, and it's four points to two. Yeah, and in fairness, we've talked about Carrie Dolan, you know, has been excellent on her free taking, and likewise, Amy O'Connor, I think, very, very rarely see that girl miss a free as well. Fiona Wright, the Galway goalkeeper from Ballanderine, again goes this side of the field. Ball comes off the helmet of a Cork player there, Neve Handifee trying to get onto it, but again, Cork are really alert to the breaking ball, far more alert than Galway in the opening stages. Lovely delivery in. From uh, Aoife Healy towards the full forward Orla Cahalan, trying to go past their marker. The referee's going to call it back. That'll be a free. Advantage being played if Chloe Sigerson doesn't put this over the bar. Chloe Sigerson drives it in. There's no need for a free. Cork go three ahead. The referee's going to talk to Shauna Healy over there as well of Galway. Uh, Chloe Sigerson gets another point. It's her second point of the game from play. She's very lively over on the far side, involved in a lot of what's good about Cork so far. Shauna Healy having a word from Ray Kelly and Cork go three ahead yeah and in fairness Cork are pushing on here and you know we've talked about how they are by far the better team go it just doesn't, doesn't seem to have settled into this game at all yet Fiona Wright decides to go to the far side this time with the puck out try and change Galway's look in winning a couple of puck outs but Galway again is, is the referee going to give a f- thought about giving a free over there for the, the pull a bit a little bit high on the Galway player if I don't know, but uh, in the end it comes off the Galway player and it's a sideline ball for Cork on the far side of the field. 12.37 gone in the first half. It's Cork 5, Galway 2. This Division 1 class of the uh, Glen Dimplex Senior Camogie Championship. If I don't know, trying to get onto it for Galway there, goes to ground. Play answers the referee and Cork mop it up again. There's always a Cork player on the shoulder available and free, but maybe this time it just uh, didn't work out for Cork. It's Carrie Dolan trying to settle Galway, trying to get a point. It's, is it curling in? It's curling out to the left hand side and wide. Wide says the referee as well, just for good measure. Two wides for Galway, one for Cork. Maybe a little bit rushed effort there that time by uh, Carrie Dolan. Yeah, in fairness, she might even better off let the ball in because we did need a score. And in fairness, to her, you know, it felt lovely for her. She got the break and, you know, she probably thought she was closer than she was. Puck out from Cork, however, has gone out of the sideline despite the best em- efforts of Hannah Looney. Galway will have the sideline right down in front of us here, in front of the Cork dugout. Matthew Toomey, the Cork manager, calling the shots out there along with his Mer Forna. Backroom team of Liam Cronin, Teddy O'Donovan, Ger Manley, Wesley O'Brien, Owen Dorgan, Michelle O'Connor, Donald O'Sullivan, and many more on that Cork backroom team. As most teams have today now, as that ball is sent in towards Siobhan Gardner. Gardner this time goes... Over to the far side, close to the sideline again. It'll go. It'll beat both players over there. Ailish O'Reilly, who uh, is playing in that corner, but had moved across the field. Wasn't expecting that pass, I think. And uh, you know, 
you have to be fair in this that Cork have settled the better Galway just not up to it at the moment in the early stages yeah, I think we've just seen the difference there the Cork are playing into each other's hand they're out attacking they're running beside each other you know, it's continuous support play whereas Galway is just hitting pot shots and I think they're expecting girls to make you know, up, up room on the pitch today when it's so hot and that it's going to be difficult to get there Sideline ball for Galway. Here comes Ailish O'Reilly now going to have a pop at the post. The first time today strikes it in. Is it gone up? It is gone up and over the bar. Well, we had just mentioned her. I don't know whether she heard her or not out there, but um, she gets in the scoring act for Galway to reduce it back to a two-point deficit. Yeah, and in fairness to Galway, I think if they can't get more ball into their full forward line there, well, it, uh, there is only two girls in there, Siobhan and Ailish, but you know, both of those girls are very dangerous if they get enough ball. Just coming up towards uh, the midway point of the first half as uh, Siobhan McGrath tries to get on the ball for Galway, gets it back towards Aoife Dunn, who goes for a shot from way out the field. That's going to drop short, surely, into the hands of the Cork goalkeeper, Amy Lee, from the Piercy, and she gives a good clearance, not just a, a clearance, but a good pass as well towards the midfielder, Saoirse McCarthy, who sends it way down the field. But back there for Galway is Emma Hellebert. It's Cork five points, Galway three points, just over 15 minutes gone. Ball sent in towards Neve Hannafy, but again, way too much on that pass from a Galway perspective. And Cork happy enough to mop it up in there again, leading by that two points. As the ball comes across here towards Aoife Healy. Plenty of time then to get the ball ahead as the, the battle for possession is between Orla Cahalan and the Galway captain, Shauna Healy. Shauna, out the middle it goes towards uh, the centre half forward, Sarah Spellman. Out to Anya Kane. Anya Kane then has time to find Halibut at centre back and ball delivered up now for the first time towards uh, oh towards Eva Duno heavy tackle there the referee allowing advantage Eva Duno has a chance to reduce the deficit here Eva Duno high Eva Duno puts it up and over the bar for Galway we're back to a one point there was a heavy tackle over there involving two players the referee deemed it was okay to play on the advantage was given to the Galway girl but a spare thought for the two players involved over there. Um, one from Cork one from Galway and the referee Ray Kelly rightly stopping the play now but that was far better from a Galway perspective over there as uh, Aoife Dunhu gets her opening point of the uh, this year's championship from play always good for a score for Galway it came in the 16th minute Galway get back to back scores 5 points to 4 low scoring but uh, plenty of good camogie in it oh, well, if, you, if ever a score I suppose was deserved there you'd have to say Aoife deserved to get that score she went through two hard tattles and you know we've always come Lamented, I suppose, Aoife down to the years. You know, she's such a tough player, a small girl on the pitch, but very, very tough. But she was so determined to get that score, vital score now for Galway. Aoife on her feet over on the far side, but the Cork player still acquiring attention, but should be okay. Takes a drop of uh, badly needed water over there as well. It and uh, has to be so hot out there, Tommy. Just double checking to see that everybody is okay. The Cork players down to her right hand side, seven or eight of them having a Quick chat there, and they're just making sure that they're uh, what the referee is uh, going to do here. It's uh, is he going in to talk to uh, one of the players about taking off the helmets or whatever? Because the helmet now being put back by Maeve Murphy from Ballinora, and you mentioned at the start of the commentary as well, it's sweltering hot inside those helmets today. Absolutely, in fairness to the girls, and I think every chance that they're getting there, any kind of a break at all, they're trying to get water and they're trying to get a, some air into their helmets. 17 and a half minutes gone here in Kenny Park, Cork Lee, Galway by the narrowest of margins, five points to four. Ball breaking in the middle of the field towards Fiona Keating, and Fiona on a customary solo run right through the heart of the Galway defence. Lovely little pass forward now towards Amy O'Connor. Galway need to get bodies in there, Cork have possession but lose it and coming out with it is Rachel Hanafy gives it to Neve in the middle of the field and Neve sends it over here towards Carrie Dolan now Carrie trying to take on our direct marker and opponent here but it's a not a great hit inside towards Siobhan McGrath as uh, Cork have it referee was playing advantage to Cork they didn't need it he's allowed play to continue and here goes Saoirse McCarthy now on the solo run going to go for a score but hooked and blocked but gets the ball back again and Cork still have possession looking for another score out around the middle of the field the referee's going to give a free in to Cork for a push in the back on Saoirse McCarthy Galway claiming that that was a little bit soft but uh, referee right up at the action here and uh, there's going to be a free in a chance for Cork now to restore a two point advantage Amy O'Connor with the slither just inside the 45 metre line a little bit to the left of the post down to the goal on her left hand side and as we come up towards 19 minutes gone on the clock, Anya Kane from Galway requires a little bit of attention while this free is about to be taken. But uh, we'll 
wait for the free referee or uh, linesman down in front of us talking to Carl Murray who's sporting a white cap as uh, Amy O'Connor strikes this one and no mistake by Amy O'Connor she puts it high and over the bar that's two points for her Cork have six and they lead by two yeah, absolutely and Cork at this stage we're just happy to keep the scores coming and keep the points tipped over and um, just get up to half time as in fairness to Galway they do need to start getting a few scores and getting into this game Anya Kane receiving a little bit of attention Cahill Murray the Galway manager backroom team of Robbie Land Molly Dunn Gavin Carey and John Connor performance coach Cora Staunton Philip Brennan in there Ad- Adrian O'Sullivan and Colm Codd Sinead Bradbury John Manton and Mickey Grealish and Mike Binden as that ball breaks again and Cork just that little yard sharper uh, getting onto these breaks as Sarah Spellman picks up the ball the referee not going to give her a free as uh, Cork can come away with it this time it's the wing forward Kleena Healy Healy now still going forward trying to get a pass over the top there's too much on that however it might allow go with Emma Albert in to uh, pull on it but straight out only as far as Chloe Sigerson for Cork who's on the sideline on the far side of the field drops a lovely ball in towards Mackey Mackey puts up the hand but it might break here instead for Orla Cahalan Cahalan going forward tries to get the pass away referee says play on no foul still work out for Katrina Mackey of Cork Katrina turning inside looking for another point she's already scored a few but the referee being asked to uh, blow up, the ball has gone out to the left-hand side f- for a wide for Cork. Two wides for Cork, two wides for Galway. But uh, again, you can see Cork in there. They just If they get that hand pass off and they get it 100%, then Galway are in trouble. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can see how dangerous Cork are. And, you know, they're constantly attacking and constantly putting the pressure on. And I suppose it's just getting harder and harder for Galway to get going here. Chance now for Fiona Ryan to take this puck out again for Galway and try and get the ball up the other end of the field. But it's Cork who... Uh, Knock that one down. Aoife Dunhu trying to come on to it for Galway. It does well. The uh, Galway number eight tries to get a forward now towards Carrie Dolan. Gets a flick on it, but Laura Tracy is back there for Cork. She really is a colossus at centre half back for Cork. She just, you know, she's there. She reads the game very well and she distributes the ball even better as that ball is delivered up by Cork now. Not as such a good delivery on this occasion with 21 minutes and 20 seconds gone. Picked up by Emma Hellebert. Delivered down line again. It's a poor effort. And uh, certainly Galway won't be happy with their first touch and deliveries in this opening half so far as that little pass now is given towards uh, Fiona Keating. Straight through the heart to Galway defence. This is a goal chance for Cork. It should be a strike that should come in. A save by the goalkeeper. Flicked out. Still not dealt with, however. The referee says play on. There should be a point for Cork. It's hit high and it's up and over the bar. But the goal chance with the big end. The Cork player gone to ground. Amy O'Connor with the point from play. Three overall for her. Four points for Galway. Seven points for Cork. And there again, another... I suppose chance for Cork another goal chance but well saved at the same time by Fiona Ryan yeah but you have to wonder how Hannah Looney I suppose from Galway's perspective how Hannah Looney is let run from the middle of the field straight in in and top of our full back line you know I suppose for Galway they really do need to tighten up in the half back line the player that picked up that uh, hand injury I think was St Finbar's Orla Cahalan from Cork she's getting the attention required out there referee Ray Kelly in there as well to have a look I think she, when she reached out to catch the ball, I think, I think it was Shawnee Healy that was also trying to connect on the ball and got her with the, with the hurl across the hand. So it would be pretty sore. She's, she is up and she's getting some water. Yep. I take this opportunity to wish a happy birthday as well to the Galway Komogi PRO, Sarah Gorin, who celebrates her birthday today. A girl is very heavily involved, of course, in Galway Komogi over the last number of years and uh, celebrating and hoping for a Galway victory, I'd say, is what she'd be hoping for. But uh, Cork different ideas here today in Kenny Park and Alton Ryan they're uh, seven minutes to go to half time they're leading by three again it's not a great puck out Aoife Dunahoo trying to get onto it for Galway Galway just seem to can't get the uh, slitter to stick to the uh, hurley properly today again there's another example of it falls from the hands of Aoife Dunahoo an opportunity now for Cork to deliver it in long in over the top touch down in there Roisin Black needs to be onto it for Galway and she is onto it tries to get the ball away one handed to Anya Kane this side of the field Galway dealing with that Cork attack on that occasion as Anya Kane decides this time we'll go long with it long delivery up towards Siobhan McGrath very close to the sideline and the end line two players go to ground Libby Coppinger being one of them already booked in the uh, first few minutes of this game but uh, that doesn't deter her one single bit she's a job to do in there on Siobhan McGrath and right now she's done it so well as Cork have loads of players free every time that ball is delivered out towards the half forward line and here goes Saoirse McCarthy now from out the field Saoirse sends this one in high but sends it out to the right hand side and wide three wides for Cork 
but Cork leading by seven points to four. Yeah, Cork might be a little bit disappointed there with their shooting there in the last couple of minutes. They've lost the, I suppose, a couple of scores, but uh, in fairness, very much, I suppose, in control of this game so far. Yeah, and I'll go back to the point we made at the start of the commentary as well, uh, that Cork have played in the Munster Championship this year, and right now you'd say, on evidence, you can see that Galway with very little uh, challenge matches coming into this game, or at least competitive games, can do all the training you want, but it's all about championship and tough games, and Cork look like the side that have been uh, relishing from that as uh, Anya Kane tries to go in over it there for Galway. she would be putting out loads of pressure. Neve Hanafy in there as well. Again, the ball sports away from Neve. Galway just can't seem to get a grip on the ball or get a grip on proceedings. And they want to watch out because Cork are travelling forward. Referee going to give a free here. He doesn't need to. The ball goes in, goes out to the right-hand side and wide. Another wide for Cork. Wide's kind of mounting up now. Cork could be comfortably ahead here in these this first half had they got the scores. As the linesman just uh, checking with the referee. What's happening there? Water being brought on again here. Puck out from Fiona Ryan for Galway goes short. Five minutes to go to the halftime break of normal time here. And Kenny Park and at the right. Ball up along the top. The referee is going to give a foul there, I think, on the Cork player, Libby Coppinger. She's already on a yellow card, but I think that one was... No, 50-50 from our viewpoint here, but it will give a chance to Galway and to Carrie Dolan to try and respond. They haven't scored since the 16th minute, which is coming up on nearly 10 minutes ago, where Cork have added on two from Amy O'Connor from a free and a point from a play with three points to her own personal tally. Is the difference between Galway right now. Carrie Dolan standing over this. In fairness to Carrie, this will be well within her range, and I suppose it is a score that is needed for Galway at this stage, Tommy. Referee Ray Kelly holding up proceedings just for a moment. I'm not sure if somebody wants to make a substitute here as uh, we look down onto the uh, pitch. There is a stoppage in play. So the referee now, his attention has been brought to something here by the linesman down in front of us. So he's calling over the logistics man, Mike Binden of Galway, and the Cork manager, Matthew Toomey. Well, the referee laying down the rule to both of the men down in front of us. I think if there's any more of that, they'll be up here beside us, and they wouldn't want to be up here today, Imelda. <laughs> Absolutely not, Tommy. In fairness to Ray Kelly, you have to give it to him. He really is keeping control of this game, and in fairness to him, I'm sure it's not easy for him to keep up with the play out in the heat there either. Just over three minutes then to go to half-time, Carrie Dolan. Probably Being pushed out. On Carrie now, you know, this, when, you just, this when you're just going to stand over a free, and next thing I suppose, you know, it's interrupted with the a free taker likes to get on with the game be from Cork or Galway and Carrie Dolan I'm sure is no different for her home side here she had to wait a couple of minutes to uh, stand over this one stands over it and strikes it in strikes it between the uprights no mistake five points to seven Cork lead as we head into f towards the final two and a half minutes of normal time not sure if we'll have much injury time here at the end of this but Carrie Dolan has got another point for Galway it's three for her seven points to five puck out on the far side of the field touched off the Galway hand over there uh, go with stick it's going to be sideline ball to Cork to so take at this, this stage you'd have to say as well Tommy but the Galway just don't seem to be getting any break there doesn't seem to be any luck going their way yeah and Cork to, to their credit have turned up here they've travelled a long distance from Cork to be here and uh, they look like the team that's had the tough games had the best preparation in many ways as regards playing in the Munster Championship and they lead by 7 points to 5 the closing stages of the first half here of the Glen Diplex Division 1 clash. We had that earlier game between Clare and Down with Clare winning by five points. So Clare off to a winning start. Emma Hellebert trying to get the ball away, but again she just delivers it straight to Katrina Mackey. Mackey now driving forward and there's players free this side of the field. Arne Kane tries to get there for Galway and does get there for Galway because Cork were in again with another goal opportunity you'd imagine. Long delivery in now towards Ailish O'Reilly. Comes off the hand of Ailish O'Reilly as a uh, referee says play on there's no foul there Cork managing to uh, clear their lines down the field it comes down towards uh, Roaching Black for Galway and the Cork full forward Orla Cahalan Orla Cahalan deemed to have had a high tackle there and that will be a free out 
to Galway. And you can just see it already, I suppose, in the bodies of all the players out there. It's really energy sapping out there today. And it's going to take an awful lot of effort, particularly in the second half, for both these sides to tre- see this game through. Oh, absolutely. You, know, you can even see in their posture every time the game stops. You know, the girls are just like bent over. They're trying to get in water and it's, it's just boiling up. But they are getting near half time. They'll be able to get some refreshments in. We're in the final minute of the first half. Galway lead by, or Cork lead by seven points to five. Galway take the free. Surely that's a. Uh, the referee says play on advantage being played I'm not quite sure if that's advantage there but uh, Galway will be happy to take the free Cork penalised for a high tackle again and Kerry Dolan now has a chance to put just one point between the sides it's been a funny f- opening 30 minutes when you sense that totally dominated by Cork you have to say Imelda you know first to the breaks first touch delivery is brilliant unlucky not to have two goals at least in the first half but uh, Galway you know doing what Galway do I suppose just staying in there at the moment yeah and in fairness to Cork you know they did have a couple of misses there I suppose in a few minutes and we've seen that as well with them in the in the league and I think Galway just kind of kept tipping along like you say and if Kerry can score this now they'll be very much in reach of the game again Again, it's from a difficult angle. It's tailing towards the left-hand post this time, but it makes no difference. It's just squeezed inside that left-hand side upright. It's another point for Galway, another one for Gary Dolan. Well, I didn't get that one right. Six minutes at the end to be added on by Ray Kelly. I know there was a stoppage earlier, but I suppose we add them all up. They all come to a six or seven minutes and right now that's what it is here Cork on the attack now leading by a point good ball inside but uh, just taken away our eye off it there for a minute was uh, Aoife Healy manages to get back and get to it again referee says play on the chance will come for Cork now to get the ball in over the bar strikes it in and strikes it out to the right hand side and wide five wides for Cork two for Galway one point between the sides and we have that extra six minutes to be added on we're now in that six minutes Ball breaks in the middle of the field, Tifa Dunno. Dunno now delivers a long ball into no one in particular. Libby Coppinger there to uh, gather position. And their delivery out to their half back line is, has been exceptional. And just except on this occasion, as the ball is sent in over the top now towards Ailish O'Reilly. And the corner back for Cork, who does well, Maeve Murphy from Ballinora. And delivers it out to far side of the field towards Chloe Sigerson. Sigerson being. Uh, Chased down there by Dervley Higgins. Brilliant block down by the Galway cornerback. But again, it's Cork first to react to it. Onto the ball. Ball touched back. Galway supporters on the far side calling for a free. But uh, Laura Tracy continues to deliver the ball long inside towards uh, Orla Cahalan. Trying to take on the Galway's fullback, Roisin uh, Black. Still going forward. The referee says too many steps by the Cork player. And that'll be a free out to Galway. Chance again going to begging for Cork. It's a bit away from us over on the far side of the field, but deemed to maybe be holding the Galway players hurler, you know, just going in frontal into the charge or whatever, but Galway would be happy to take that free. Yeah, in, in fairness to Arlick Allen, I think she was just trying to gain a bit of ground to get close to the goals, and, you know, she just caught there for overcarrying, but you have to say a great ball in t- into Orla Callaghan from Lord Tracy, who's having a thundering game here, centre back for Cork. The Galway free is touched by a Cork player on the far side, resulting in the sideline ball for Galway, way over on the far side. Lines person Liz Dempsey indicating that it's a maroon and white ball. Aoife Dunhu placing the ball on the deck. We've two and a half of the six minutes to be added on. Gone through here in Kenny Park and Atten Ryan. A glorious evening here on the 3rd of June as uh, Sabina Rabbit sends the ball in the general direction of the goal with full forward comes off. Uh, Siobhan McGrath, Cork are back there in numbers and they really are targeting that go with full forward line they're not long them any space at all inside whereas Kleena Healy here now still going forward trying to uh, work a pass across Cork's distribution has to be said has been fantastic and here is another example of that a chance for Chloe Sigerson to go for goal cross the face of the goal towards Amy O'Connor going are under lots of pressure the ball very close to the inline Fiona Ryan trying to stand up the uh, Cork player sent across the face of the goal comes off the stick of Dervla Higgins of Galway who tries to get it away and eventually gets it back to Fiona Ryan who sends it straight out into the hand of the uh, Cork half forward who sends it back with interest towards the goal and back into the uh, return pass to Fiona Ryan both sides guilty of you know of some poor uh, passing it has to be said in the opening half there is a lot of nerves out there I know but particularly from a Galway perspective, a little bit of rustiness as well. Yeah, in fairness, Cork seems to just lose a bit of concentration there. Chloe Sigerson probably should have taken her score there when she had the opportunity, and then it just, I suppose, went to begging after that. She does it this time, however, getting the ball over on the far side of the field. 34 minutes gone, Cork got two ahead again. Chloe Sigerson, who's been the thorn in the Galway defence all through, 
I make that three points for her as well. So eight points to six, a two-point ball game. We're in the added on time here, of which we've got about two minutes to go. Anya Kane, who's named at number 12, has started that half-back line as that's a high tackle there. The referee giving advantage. Carrie Dolan trying to take advantage and put it up and over the bar. She does. She doesn't need the free. It's a great score. Referee will talk to the clear... Uh, Referee Ray Kelly, happy enough with that. Just a little ticking for the Cork player. And then we're in the 35th minute. And uh, Carrie Dolan gets probably one of the scores of the game so far. From a Galway perspective, yeah. anyway, her fourth, her fifth point. And Galway back to a one-point ball game. Eight points to seven in the dying stages here of this first half. The puck out from Amy Lee. Again, finds its destination in the middle of the field. Saoirse McCarthy, left-handed, strikes it up towards Katrina Mackey. Gets a lovely little touch on it. And now there's an opportunity for... Uh, Cork maybe to finish with another score here. Orla Cahalan trying to go through two or three Galway players. Still going forward. She has no hurl. And the ball comes back outside towards Mackey. And Katrina Mackey sends it flying between the uprights. What a first half Mackey has had for uh, Cork. Just go back on the scoring there. She's got another point. That's two. That's three for Katrina Mackey. A corner forward. And uh, that's what Cork can do. They can hit back very quickly to lead again by nine points to seven. And you can see, in fairness to Cork, they are always looking for Katrina Mackey. She's moving there, constantly moving in towards the goal, and they're trying to pick her out. Ball delivered inside again. And again, it's the Cork defenders that are on top in there. The referee's going to give a free out to Maeve Cahalan for uh, a little bit of a sandwich in there. Two Galway players going in the top of the corner back. We're 30 seconds left of the added on time on our stopwatch here. Cork leading by nine points to seven. A very interesting first half so far. And we did say Cork had been the farm team in the opening 35 minutes. As Laura Tracy goes this side of the field towards Hannah Looney. But it's intercepted. An opportunity. Galway looking for the free. The referee says no play on. Ailish O'Reilly will feel hard done by with that. Not quite sure Cahill Murray would be happy with it either. But uh, nonetheless, it's a ball down deep into the goal. Cork Galway with defence. And an opportunity now for Mackey bearing down a goal. Shot comes in. It's high and up and over the bar. Galway claimed that the, they needed the free at the other end, but uh, Katrina Mackey, by far the best player so far, four points for her, and that could be the halftime score here. Ten points to seven, there's referee Ray Kelly, will call for the slitter at halftime. There'll be a puck of the ball between the sides at halftime at ten points to seven, but Cork will go in the happier, you'd imagine, here. Matthew Toomey, obviously, has done his homework since the league final. He's happy with uh, his players going in. There's a little bit more of a pep in their step as they go in at halftime. Go with following them in closely as well. But uh, your overall thoughts in the first half, Imelda? Cork, good value for their three-point advantage. Ah, yeah, in fairness, you know, I think it is all about Cork here. In fairness, they started off very well. Probably did maybe lacked a little bit of concentration there towards the end of the first half, missing a few scores, but very much, I suppose, came back into it there just before half time. Go, we probably will be disappointed. Just haven't got going at all. Carrie Dolan, in fairness, is probably keeping them in the game with her scores. But I suppose they will have an awful lot to play for in the second half because they will feel that they haven't performed yet, whereas the pressure will be on Cork to keep up that performance. But, I mean, you have to say, there's a, you know, it seems to be a different Cork team that has come here than what we've seen in the league. They brought in this running game, they're attacking, they're supporting, whereas I suppose Galway on the other, high, the other side is taking pot shots that's not working out. So very much, I suppose, in favour of Cork for the first half. So as we reached half time here, we'd, we'd say... A big welcome to the under-12 teams involved in the mini-games action in Kenny Park and Athenry from Athenry, Kilkenirn, Pierce's, Portumna, Sarsfields and Skahan Menla, all Galway teams, of course, involved in the halftime entertainment here. But uh, we have reached the uh, midway point of this Division 1 of the Glyn Demplex Senior Camogie Championship game and it's Cork that lead at halftime by three. We'll be back for live second-half commentary in just a while. But for now, halftime here in Kenny Park and Athenry. Cork lead, Cork 10 points, Galway 7 points.
Yeah, welcome back to Kenny Park and Athlone Rye. Perfect timing as both sides make their way out for the second half here. Cork enjoying a three-point advantage at the break, leading by ten points to seven. Um, we're just looking out at the uh, pitch here uh, as we uh, take a break from the uh, harsh sunshine. It's uh, gone in behind some clouds and well. There's a little bit of a breeze here now, which is uh, quite welcome in Athlone Rye. Yeah, absolutely, give the players a chance as well there. We were just noting that normally when they're coming out of the dressing room here in Kinney Park and Athlone Rye, all the teams are, I suppose, doing a nice li- lively jog out onto the field, but both teams taking the option to walk out today. It's all about conserving energy and, I suppose, being, being hydrated to get through the second half now. So, Ray Kelly, the referee, checks the watch on the left hand and the right hand, throws the ball in, second half underway. Galway looking for a better start to the second half here. Sarah Spellman's half-hit effort is picked up easily there by the Cork defence. And they're going to try and uh, work it out through the hands. Good work. This ball is given to Izzy O'Regan from Ballygarvan. Ball gone out off a Galway stick. It'll be a sideline ball to Cork in the early stages of the uh, second half here. It's easy, Regan strikes that one in and strikes it well. Nice delivery, forwards ball, but uh, Roshin Black trying to come onto it for Galway. Aoife Dunahoo, short little hand pass to Emma Hellebert, who delivers it left-handed in towards the uh, Galway full forward line. Referee says play on, ball breaks inside now towards Siobhan McGrath, but kicked away by a cork boot and kicks with uh, plenty of vengeance in there as well. Gets it out to the far side of the field towards Cleo on the Healy. Referee has spotted a frontal charge there. By the Cork player who tried to get around the Galway player in fairness, but uh, deems to have done it illegally on this occasion, and it'll be a chance for Carrie Dolan now at the start of the second half, like she did in the first half in the opening minute to get Galway's second half count underway. The referee is talking to Laura Tracy there now as well, and she gets a yellow card. So she joins Libby Coppinger on a yellow, who picked up one early in the first half for Cork as well, but nothing malicious about that tackle for sure. As Carrie Dolan, scorer of five points for Galway in the first half of their tally of seven, has an opportunity now to reduce the deficit in the opening two minutes of the second half. Strikes this one very high. Has she got enough on it? No, she hasn't. One umpire goes for it, and the other, the other it's registered as a point. As far yeah. as I thought, this umpire on the left hand side here. He definitely sent it wide on our wide, side, yes. And it's Rick uh, Kelly has ten points it down. to eight. It's a uh, written down by uh, Ray Kelly so Carrie Dolan gets that free that's her sixth of the day ten points to eight in the opening two minutes Galway get the opening score in the second half Ailish O'Reilly driving forward advantage being played not sure if it's accruing so Galway get a second free at the start of the second half and just a little bit of confusion there where the umpire on the left hand waved a wide the other umpire went straight for the white flag Ray Kelly was in contact with both and decided that that was a point yeah and in fairness both Ray Kelly probably had the best view from where he was sometimes it is hard indeed if you're standing right beside the post um, but in fairness uh, for Carrie I'm sure she's delighted that that one was ticked off and a great start for the second half for Galway so two and a half minutes gone in the uh, second half here and Galway have an opportunity through the stick of Carrie Dolan to uh, Reduce the deficit again, but that one to me is tailing in at the end. The uh, umpire has said it's gone. The Liz Dempsey is going to get involved here now as well. She has to get involved here. She's calling, she's calling the uh, the referee's going to go in because we probably have the best seat in the house to watch that going in. It started way outside the left hand post and t- curled in towards as we watch it again on the replay. We're following the slitter all the way in over the crossbar from our vantage point. Now, the referee's got to go in and talk to the umpire on the left. I'm not sure is it about the last decision that he made or this one. It was certainly this one. And he's going to talk to the two umpire. Liz Dempsey, in fairness to the uh, lines person down here, said it's going to be a, a point. As far as either There's no point in her going in and talking to Ray Kelly on the heads. If that's not the case, the umpires are going to go and uh, raise the white flag, I think. as a, it, it, it is a point. Yeah. The white flag is... Seven points for Carrie Dolan, nine points for Galway, ten points for Cork. And there are two points. Could be a talking point at the end of this game, certainly. In fairness to Carrie Dolan, you'd know by her reaction, you, you know, she just, she, like, she was so disappointed when he raved it wide. And, and I find a lot of times the actual free taker themselves knows if it goes over or not. So I don't think there was any question there, and definitely from where we were standing. Ray Kelly, the referee, having a chat with Carrie Dolan as well uh, for something that she might have just alluded to when that ball was signalled wide initially but uh, hard to blame the uh, player when you know we could see it quite clearly from here and 
expertly on the replays as well. So Cork take the puck out short. It's 10 points for Cork, 9 points for Galway. Four minutes gone in the second half in Kenny Park in Athen Rye. Ball driven up along the line. Cork trying to get into it. The referee spotted a foul and that'll be a free in the middle of the field for Cork. And uh, they feel that they, they need this one come out to take. It will be Chloe Sigerson from Kille. She's uh, marshalling her troops out around the middle as well, telling them where to line up and where to go to. But it's uh, certainly on a day like today, if these proven score getters from place balls should be fancying themselves with every opportunity that they get. And Chloe Sigerson, no different on this occasion. Just a little step back and a strike in, plenty of distance on it, plenty of height, but goes out to the left hand side and wide. Six wides now for Cork two just for Galway and one point between the sides puck out taken quickly by Fiona Ryan to a uh, hometown girl here Dervla Higgins from the Athen Rye Club sending the ball in over the top taken down brilliantly by Laura Tracy tap down there is uh, Neve Hanafy for Galway trying to get onto it Carrie Dolan is in there but it's uh, taken brilliantly by the corner back for Cork Maeve Cahillan clearance completed way over the far side of the field to the unmarked Cork player and now there's a chance for Cork see Fahili from out the field goes through tries to get the uh, Delivery in, but well read by Gaul was number 12 playing at wing back. That's Anya Kane to Dervla Higgins, who's going to go on a solo run. She's be as well to uh, step back and try and find Carrie Dolan. Carrie Dolan out trying to uh, get the ball off. The referee says he's going to stop the play. You can hear the crack down here, the knock that Carrie Dolan picked up there as she was driving forward. I'm not quite sure if the referee's going to give a free here either. Maybe just to throw in ball as. Uh, we watch it back on the replay here. Carrie just uh, let that ball slip by her. Went to go down and pick up the ball. The uh, Cork player coming across and the Cork defender coming out. It really was just an unfortunate clash there as uh, Ray Kelly has the ball in hand and will throw this one in. And right now, with six minutes gone in the second half, it really is on tender hooks this game here. With just a point between the sides. Cork leading. As that ball is thrown in, Cork trying to get the body in over it. Good work there by the Cork centre forward. And that is good work for Cork, who lead by a point. And Cork want to do everything quick today and everything fast. And that's kind of upsetting Galway. Not used to these uh, the speed of Cork here today. As Cahillan thought about going for a strike, the ball is going in towards the Galway goalkeeper. Hard to see the slitter in the uh, sun here, but that's a poor... Clearance out to Katrina Mackey, who's already got a plethora of points. Should get another one for Cork. Strikes it in. Strikes it out to the left-hand side and wide. Is the uh, linesman on the far side of the field. It's a sideline ball on the far side. It's going to result in from that puck out that was taken quickly. But the point's not given to Katrina Mackey on that occasion so I think the sunshine is playing havoc with the umpires today yeah. Amelda yeah and in fairness I think to the umpire down here on our left you can see he's got his hand up both umpires indeed to our left have got their hands up over the right so I'm sure it is very very difficult to see out there Cork have now won possession out around the middle again and work a little bit of space the shot will come in it looks a good effort from out the field comes back off the upright would you believe it who's first to this one this is crucial here to see who can get onto it it's Roisin Black the Galway full back that comes away with it she needs support little pop pass to Emma Hellebert who's uh, driving forward now pass to Sabina Rabbit trying to go through the tackles referee says play on and he eventually delivers it long towards Siobhan McGrath down to her left hand side too much on it out over the sideline on the far side of the field that was dangerous there from a Galway perspective. Good effort by the Cork player to send the ball towards the post, but uh, coming back off the upright. And uh, luckily, from a Galway point of view, they were the first to react. Yeah, in fairness, Roshan Black did very well there in the Galway defence, um, bursting out with the with the ball indeed and getting it out of danger. Again, Cork uh, spread the wings here, and it's really causing havoc on Galway as they deliver a long ball up to corner, the corner forward area here. Too much on it, gone out over the inline. Another wide for Cork. I make that eight wide so far. In the game, eight and a half minutes gone. Galway take the puck out quickly, but Cork are onto it like a flash. Aoife Dunahu trying to uh, pick up the pieces for Galway. She goes to ground, still has the ball. The referee says over carrying, and that's going to be a free to Cork. The substitute as well being um, brought on the Cork team. Sork McCartan coming in. So she's coming in. She didn't start. Amy O'Connor seems to be going off the Cork team. 
the captain being taken off scored three points in the first half but uh, obviously not going well in there at the moment Matthew Toomey happy enough to make the, the big calls in these games as uh, Chloe Sigerson sends this ball in from out the field and sends it out to the left hand side and wide well Cork if they don't get it now to this game if Galway do come back to catch them or draw with them they'll look back at some of those wides Imelda you know, particularly in the second half, you know, poor enough wides. Oh, Cork will have to be very disappointed with their shooting. Indeed, at the end, of, we've seen at the end of the first half, and now indeed at the beginning of the second half. Ball up towards Sabina Rabbit from Emma Hellebert's delivery, not sticking to the hand or the hurl of the uh, Atenray native. And a little bit of a schmazzle results in Cork picking it up in the middle of the field. Now here goes uh, Fiona Keating on a, one of her customary runs out the field. High, this one looks good. Again, it's gone out to the left hand side and wide. Gone into double figures of wides for Cork. All of it just two will tell you the dominance that Cork have had, but you know, we've seen it in many of the game. If you don't convert your chances, you run the risk of getting caught in the end. Yeah, and I suppose Galway should be capitalising on this and should be driving forward. Was, you know, I think they're just relying on a few players out there today to carry them. Good work by Carrie Dolan over there. Shot blocked down. They begin to liven up a little bit here now on Athen Rye. Cork coming out of it and Cork win the free over on the far side of the field. And Cork really fired up, not just on the field, but right down in front of us here on the sideline. Plenty of uh, action going on down there as well as uh, they fight for every ball. Galway come away with it, however, this time. Anya Kay now looking for a good delivery for Galway. Again, it's a half hooked effort that sees Ayla O'Reilly having to come out towards the middle to try and win it. She does well. Tries to go through two or three Cork players. Still going forward is Eilish O'Reilly now for Galway. Pop pass off over the far side towards Siobhan McGrath. Siobhan being uh, bottled up for most of today. Sends it back to where it came from. Back to Eilish O'Reilly. A chance for the equalising score that goes out to the right hand side and wide. Wide number three for Galway. Dare I say it certainly has, even at this early stage in the second half, very much looking like a draw of some side. Don't get that all-important goal. Yeah, and Eilish would be disappointed with that. She worked very hard getting the ball through and took the pass back and taking the shot and just too went wide on her. Too many steps by Izzy O'Regan, who didn't have a support coming from a Cork player for once in the game. Ifa Dunn, who takes the free quickly, and it goes towards Siobhan McGrath now. Seeing a little bit more of the uh, slitter at the start of the second half. Going to go for a score from a difficult angle. It's high. Could it be the equalising score for Galway? It is the equalising score. And Cork beginning to rue some of them misses. Siobhan McGrath with her opening score of the contest for Galway comes at a crucial stage 12 minutes into the second half. Siobhan McGrath, fan play, sends that one up and over the bar. 10 points each, Imelda. Yeah, and in fairness, well, that's the first time we've seen Siobhan get onto the ball with an opportunity to score and she made no mistake about that. We're still kind of get used to Siobhan McGrath with the black helmet. We're so used to her out there with the, with the yellow helmet, Tommy. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to uh, maybe confuse the uh, Cork side. Sorkin McCartan now from St. Finbar's with the opportunity to uh, give the, her side the lead again from way out the country but as we said little or no breeze dropping it in towards the house it's a dangerous ball it's going to drop in the square who's alert to this one Galway trying to get to it Cork player there although being outnumbered does very well Anya Kane is back there for Galway trying to get a stick onto it but Cork Holding on to it, gone out over the sideline. Sideline ball to Galway, very close to their own in line, down to the right hand side. Ball being put on the deck now by Anya Kane, just a metre out from the in line, on the sideline. Cork 10 points, Galway 10. Anya Kane strikes this one, tries to get it out around the middle towards Neve Hannafy. She's beaten to it, and Cork now, little. Flurry of hand passes, trying to work it into a scoring position. There should be a scoring position here now as uh, Jervla Higgins gets a half block on that. And that's good work by the Galway defence. Galway's captain, Sean Healy now, tries to uh, send a hand pass back to Higgins. And Higgins to uh, Neve Hannafy, who steps back inside the tackle. Now goes on a solo run for Galway. Tries to uh, offload it to uh, very close to the sideline towards uh, the wing back as the Rachel Hannafy and the ball delivered long now in towards Siobhan McGrath out in front of Libby Coppinger goes to ground Sarah Spellman in there for Galway the centre half forward trying to get onto it Sabina Rabbit ball comes off a cork boot on the far side of the field 14 minutes or thereabouts gone and the score remains Galway 10 points Cork 10 points in this uh, Division 1 Glenn Dimplex All-Ireland Senior Camogie Championship game a opening game for both of these two sides Clare played down earlier Clare winning that one by five points. So a good start to Clare's campaign. 
who play Galway in two weeks' time at a clear venue. The referee going to give advantage here. Foul on Carrie Dolan, and that will be a free into Galway, away over on the far side of the field. Um, far better ball, has to be said, from Galway's defence and midfield going into the forward lines in this second half. You mentioned it at halftime that the, probably the delivery wasn't great into a two-player full forward line for Galway, but far better in the second half. Yeah, in fairness, they are trying to pick out players. Roisin Black, they're you know, playing very well there in full-back for Galway. Coming out, you know, having a look. Same with Shawnee Healy, looking up. Derbla Higgins, having a look, trying to pick out a player. Just making it that little bit easier for the Galway attack. Kerry Dolan again, like, working so hard out there for Galway. We're coming up towards the end of the third quarter here with uh, 15 minutes or thereabouts gone in the second half. Carrie Dolan faces probably the most difficult angle of a free that she's taken all day. The umpires are looking at it. Quite happy. 11 points to Galway, 10 points to Cork. And Carrie Dolan makes light of the uh, distance and the difficulty of that free to get another free for Galway, her eighth point. And at 15 minutes gone, Galway have scored four points without reply at the start of this second half to lead Cork by one. Rachel Hanfey b- batting for possession over there with the Cork girl going forward. Referees giving advantage. Cork will get a free themselves on the far side of the field. And this will be a chance to level it up again. Cork have plenty of free takers available to them. Chloe Sigerson and McCartan, just one or two to mention. Cork are going to bring in a substitute now as well. Number 17 in the next few minutes. Em- Emma Murphy from Den Rovers is going to come into the action won't be before this free is taken Matthew Toomey offering words of advice to the uh, Cork substitute Cork now as the sun comes right back out here in Kenny Park playing into the goal down to our right hand side sizing up the difficulty of this free and strikes it in strikes it high but strikes it out to the left hand side and wide Wide number 11, we mentioned the wides tally, you had five at half time, they've added six and no scores so far in this second half. And all their good work that they've done in the first half, you know, sees going now leading by the narrowest of margins. Yeah, and as well as that, Amy O'Connor is probably their main free taker and, you know, Amy, I suppose, had been called off whether she was, maybe she was carrying an injury and the girl couldn't continue, but in fairness, you know, it is a big call supposed to take off one of your main free takers. So, here we go, the puck out from Fiona Ryan is going to go short to Shauna Healy. Galway trying to work it through the hands back there. Off it goes to Sabina Rabbit, who needs to uh, deliver it long and delivers it down the uh, centre half back channel. But it's a poor delivery in the end. The high ball certainly doesn't suit Galway, and there are two players clash in there as well. It will be a free out when play resumes. But uh, you know that that high ball, I suppose, it doesn't suit any f- forward, whether it be from Cork or Galway. Yeah, and I suppose we have to think as well of the, the conditions today. The sun, I suppose, is getting lower in the sky; it's making it harder to see. So when the ball is coming down there, I suppose it's just they're losing vision as well, and you can see we've had a couple of collisions. Yeah, we've we had six minutes added on at the end of the first half. Quite likely to see something similar at the end of this second half, of which we've got about twelve and a half minutes of normal time to go. As a Cork gather again down to our right hand side. Words of wisdom being dished out there by the backroom team as well. The Mayor Fornia delivering the message from Matthew to me what he wants of his Cork girls out there. Interesting that Galway haven't made any substitutions just yet. No, and I'm just, I suppose, if you're just thinking there that it is uh, in these conditions, it's something that you would expect that you see more girls coming off the bench as you're trying to relieve some of the girls that's out there. Cork, as we said, we have seen, have made changes, but we don't, we don't see any of the Galway girls getting ready to enter in the field of play just of yet. So, the free will be taken by Cork. Down the far side it goes, but it's taken brilliantly back there by Carrie Dolan. Not just a good free taker turn defender on that occasion now t- turns supplier inside towards Siobhan McGrath Siobhan McGrath going down over the ball for Galway thinking about going for a pop at another score it'd be a great score if it goes over Siobhan McGrath claps the hurley it's a super score set up brilliantly by Carrie Dolan Siobhan McGrath gets her second score took down the ball brilliantly fired it up and over the bar 18 and a half minutes gone and Galway now have gone two ahead 12-10 this yeah. ball comes this side of the field stick in there by uh, Aoife Dunhu working tirelessly as always does well loses the uh, side of the ball in the uh, sun, bright sunlight as that ball is flicked forward going back to try to get to it is Dervla Higgins but Cork's player is out in front here or the Cahalan sees the ball spin away from her initially 
Galway and Cork players fighting as if their lives depend on it. They probably does. It's first round of the championship, 26 degrees in Kinney Park and Athenry on the 3rd of June. Where else would you want to be? The referee has spotted a foul on the Cork player, and that'll be a free in for Cork to try and reduce the deficit, trading by 12 points to 10, with just over 10 and a half minutes to go in this second half. So, you know, two evenly matched teams in this second half, you'd have to say, Imelda, with, uh, you know, Cork have yet to score, and we've played nearly 20 minutes in the second half and that was certainly a stat that Matthew Toomey won't be happy with and that he's got to be looking at in the future you know to get off to a good start but to go 20 minutes without scoring yeah in fairness it's something they would be very very disappointed about and you know they have been taking the shots and just haven't been getting the scores here's a shot in from that corner forward we spoke about at half time she turned free taker now and uh what a score by uh, Katrina Mackey from a difficult angle there. She had four points in the first half. She's got a point from a free in the second half. And 20 minutes gone, there's a point between them. Go with 12, Cork 11. Uh, vital score there for Cork. And first, Katrina Mackey, where she stood up and took the pressure off the free taken there and getting a great score for Cork. Pushing the back over there, referee uh, didn't spot it. But uh, Cork won't mind. They're trying to get the possession close to the sideline, still going forward. As, uh, Cork still have it. Looking for that equalising score now. Lovely ball in towards the centre. Aoife Dunhu in there with a touch for Galway. Trying to pick the ball. It's just not coming up. The referee has spotted a foul by Aoife Dunhu. And that'll be a free iron to Cork on the far side of the field. Interesting to see if Katrina Mackey will go out and take this one as well. She had a fantastic first half. She got Cork's first score in the second half. With nine and a half minutes to go here. And uh, it really is all to play for. If you don't know, picking up a yellow card there, in fairness, and I suppose this is where both teams want to be careful and disciplined because I suppose Cork as it gets close to the edge and as the heat builds up out there, you know, it'd be very easy to give away silly freeze and pick up maybe a second yellow. Second yellow, yeah, exactly. 21 minutes just uh, appearing on the clock down to her left hand side. So nine minutes to go, 12 points, 11 go with lead. Five unanswered points at the start of the second half, three from Carrie Dolan, two from Siobhan McGrath had given Galway a 12 point to 10 lead but that point by Katrina Mackey her fifth of the afternoon four of them from play in the first half has given Cork just that one point deficit which they could now level up the contest here even though it is a long distance free over near the sideline on the far side and it won't be Katrina Mackey that will take this one shouts of come on Cork, come on Galway both sets of supporters here in big numbers as well Chloe Sigerson to me it looks like on the far side of the field that's going to take this one she has been Cork's free taker from long range over the last number of years and uh, again we've had you know plenty of stoppages Imelda in this second half as well so we do say we have about nine minutes to go but in, in essence you could have still 15 so there's still a lot yeah. to play for in this yeah we've seen there at the end of the first half we had six minutes added on so you could see quite a bit added on here as well today 12 points for Galway Cork 11 and attention still being given to the Cork player just in front of the referee, Ray Kelly, who's happy enough to make sure that the Cork player is fit enough to continue and getting the required attention. All this, however, kind of eats into a bit of time as well, but also for a free taker, we saw Carrie Dolan having to wait for a few minutes in the first half as well. You know, it's, it's not the ideal preparation for a you know, an important free. No, it is difficult as I said when you're left standing, I suppose, waiting to take a free. Still no sign on the Galway bench of uh, any substitutes. Not that you have to warm up, but there's still no sign of any changes being made by Carl Murray and his management team just yet. Happy enough to go with what they have so far. And I suppose Tommy as well, just remember there's never too much between those teams. You know, they've always seemed to battle it out yeah. down to the years. Galway, I suppose, over the last couple of years probably have come out top more times than Cork have come out on top, but there's never much between them. It's always a fight down to the wire, and I suppose we're we're seeing no different today. A round of applause then for the uh, Cork player who's uh, fit to continue. Play will resume at the free over on the far sideline. And an opportunity for Cork to level it up once again. She strikes this one towards the post. It looks good from here. It's hot dropping in, but it drops out to the wrong side of the post on the right-hand side. 7 and 5 is 12 wides for Cork. And Galway still lead by that narrowest of margins. 12 points to 11. Puck out taken short towards Dervla Higgins out this side of the field. Needs to uh, try and uh, 
launch a go away attack but uh, she has to come all the way out from her own half back line as uh, Emma Hellebert called for that pass from Roisin Black gets it forward towards uh, the Galway corner forward Elisha O'Reilly as uh, Sarah Spellman gives a lovely pop pass off to Neve Hannafy Hannafy now bearing down the Cork goal lovely pop pass inside here to Siobhan Gardner she could have just flicked it in as it gone into the net it is now Siobhan McGrath for Galway gets the opening goal Siobhan Gardner did the hard work you'd imagine but Siobhan McGrath gets the touch in in the end score of one goal and two points as we watch the replay back here the pop pass inside from Neve Hannafy towards Gardner, Gardner gets a touch on it and in the end it was touched in by the goal with full forward Siobhan McGrath to the back of the net he probably was Run going 12. that direction anyway in fairness I think from Siobhan McGrath 25 minutes Gardner. gone and Galway get that goal which is crucial you'd imagine one twelve till 11 Cork may just go back to rue those um, wides Galway stuck to their task so far the ball up again towards Carrie Dolan how much ball has she seen for Galway today the scorer of 8 points as uh, Cork try to get the uh, Impetus back and try to get forward again. It's a four point ball game. 1 12 to 11 points. Plenty of time still to go here in Kinley Park and Athen Right. Nobody leaving early. The clock says we are in the final five minutes. Out comes uh, Rachel Hannafy. Tries to get the ball away towards uh, Aoife Donahue. Too much on the pass, however. And Cork win it out around the middle of the field. Referee Ray Kelly keeping a close eye and no foul on the Cork player. Now there's a little bit of space in the middle here for Sirka McCartan. McCartan now looking to uh, work. Another score, she can't catch it again, but she can give a good pass. Cork of players free over the side of the field. This is a scoring opportunity of some description for the Cork girls. They go for the goal. Fiona Ryan alert to it for Galway. Fiona Ryan looking for support. The support comes from the Galway fullback, Roisin Black. Roisin put under all sorts of pressure there. Good work by the Cork number 17, Emma Murphy. But the uh, ball will come to Neve Hannafy. Hannafy has support if she needs it off the shoulder, but she decides to go forward. Involved in the goal for Galway a couple of moments ago. Still going. Now needs to offload it. Referee was going to give a foul for overcarrying, and he may have been rightly to do so. Advantage coming out to Galway for a free, and they're going to go back out to free as well. Cork, unfortunately, on that occasion, not to get the free. Referee Ray Kelly had the whistle to his mouth. Looked like he was going to give the free for overcarrying, and sometimes dumb decisions just go against you, and on that occasion, it goes against Cork. Absolutely, and we will be disappointed with that. And I suppose at this stage, Cork will take any opportunity they could get. They're four points down. I suppose in a game where Cork have dominated for definitely for all of the first half, and indeed most of the second half, they'll be very disappointed at this stage. But you have to give compliments to Galway for a fantastic goal, which all started off from the number four for Galway, Derby Higgins, bursting out with the ball. And you can actually see, I suppose, Tommy, that's the game that the, the Galway have opted for the second half. They started to take it on. They started to run more with the ball, like Cork would do in the first half, and it seems to have worked for Galway. Galway will be very happy at the moment as we come towards the final three minutes of normal time here in Athenry, leading by 112 to Cork's 11 points. It's been the breathtaking uh, contest so far. Cork leading at half time by 10 points to 7. Katrina Mackey on fire at corner forward, scoring four points from play. But Cork have only managed one score so far in the second half, and that has been the difference. Seven second half wides tells its own story. Yeah, and I suppose the experience of Galway, you can say, as you can see, has coming true. You know, they were under awful pressure in the first half, and you know, they, even as, no matter how hard they tried, the scores seemed to come a begging for them. And yet, I suppose that compliments again to the great Carrie Dolan, the freeze, and and even from play, kept Galway in this game, and they kept ticking along with Siobhan McGrath, and I suppose popping up getting two great points. Not to forget Aoife's done Aoife done his points in the first half, just point by point, I suppose. Tammy Day just kept themselves in the game and then when an opportunity arose for them to get the goal, unlike Cork two opportunities if you like in the first half Galway made no mistake indeed and finished at the back of the net. To me it looks like Galway are going to bring on a substitute and just wait for the name, Sarah Durvin, two time All-Ireland winning captain for Galway who didn't feature very much in the league, actually just came back into the panel towards the end of the league looks like to me the slip of paper has been given by the Galway secretary to the uh, fourth official here but we'll stay with the play because Kerry Dolan has an opportunity to stretch Galway further here albeit from over 65 yards out it's high it's dropping in around the house and out to the right hand side and wide four wide for Galway it's Cork 112 Galway 11 points Sarah Durvin being given words of encouragement as if she needs any from the Galway manager Cahill Murray, substitute for Cork as well we can tell you about is number 22 Ali Smith from Ahada coming into the action and coming off is number 5 Aoife Healy, her club mate and she comes off this side of the field 12 for 17 tells me that uh, Ornia Kane comes off for Galway haven't put in a huge shift for Galway um, if that's the official 
proper number. We also got a couple of more girls warming up here, but I'm not quite sure they're coming in. Uh, Ray Kelly, Oni Kane, been called off. Sarah Devon gone to full back. So Oni Kane's new role as a half back for Galway comes to an end. Cork take the puck out quickly over on the far side. We're in the final minute of normal time. We'll get the uh, fourth officials added on time in a few minutes. But this game still very much up for grabs here. Derver Higgins for Galway. Bypasses Carrie Dolan to get it to Neve Hannafy, who puts it on the stick over on the far side. Tries to step inside. Lovely little pass in towards Siobhan Gardner, who delivers it long towards Ailish O'Reilly. Knocks it down in front of herself. Still going forward. The referee not going to give a free. No foul there, even though Ailish O'Reilly will plead with the referee. Plenty of cork bodies this side of the field. They need a score now, and they need one pretty quickly to get back into a, a one-score game as that ball is sent up along the line towards Katrina Mackey. If there's anyone that you want on the ball, it's probably this girl wearing number 18. Since a lovely ball inside now. Chance here now for Cork to uh, work something. Being pushed out all the time is there a, the full forward or the Cahillan. Thought about going for a score, has to go back inside. It changes the uh, point of attack. But God will read it there. Tr enough to get it away to Siobhan Gardner, who decides to go along, sends it down here towards Ailish O'Reilly. We're in the added on time, but we haven't seen what the fourth official is playing as Ailish O'Reilly goes to ground again. Too many cork bodies there. Good defending by the Rebels as the ball is delivered out around the middle of the field now towards Saoirse McCarthy. McCarthy now from way out the field. Long ball in towards the Galway goalkeeper. Dangerous ball. Tapped down by Fiona Ryan. Fiona Ryan sends it out over the far side towards Aoife O'Donoghue. Aoife O'Donoghue, is there too much on that? There is a little bit. Seven minutes to be added on at the end of this. We played one of them already, so six to go here. It's far from over in Kenny Park and Athen Rye. Galway won 12, Cork 11 points. Ball blocked down brilliantly by Siobhan Gardner. The break falls kindly for Rachel Hannafy, who tries to go through two or three Cork defenders and in the end sends a lovely delivery into the uh, run of Siobhan McGrath out in front of her marker Libby Coppinger that has been a mighty battle all day long out the field to Ailish O'Reilly thought about going off to the right back it goes towards Siobhan McGrath can go with work another score Siobhan McGrath has an effort that's only going to drop into the hands of Amy Lee and loads of play loads of space this side for Chloe Sigerson Cork now looking for a score they only scored one point in the second half to date that a point on 20 minutes from Katrina Mackey Jersey being pulled there of the Cork player play on, says the referee. As the ball breaks, Cork might just get onto this break. They need to get onto it, but Rachel Hannafy has other ideas for Galway. The wing back, trying to get a little pop pass off towards Neve. Neve Hannafy now, moving forward, has support from Siobhan Gardner, doesn't need her just yet. Still going forward, is that little tap on the hand play on, says the referee. Sabina Rabbit might fancy a shot from out the field. It's going to drop out to the right hand side and wide for Galway's fifth wide. We're at two minutes of the injury time played five minutes to go and there's four points between the sides puck out this time from Amy Lee goes over the far side of the field is there too much on that there is too much on it trying to find a precise pass to the Cork wing forward over on the far side was Kalina Healy trying to get onto it but in the end Cork are going to bring on another substitute here Claude Finn from Father O'Neill's going to come into the action and Kearney the Galway Camogie secretary down there as well with plenty of bits of paper for Liz Dempsey and the fourth official Galway going to bring in Shannon Corcoran from Sarsfields Club. Is he giving a free over on the far side of the field? Ray Kelly, while Saul, this was going on here. Substitute's been allowed to come in now. Number 19 for Cork. Claude Finn comes in the place of Orla Cahillan of St. Finbar's. Go, we're going to take off Ailish O'Reilly and bring on Shannon Corcoran. We played three minutes of the added on time. We've got four at least to go here. As the sun takes a little bit of a break behind some of the clouds behind us. A cool breeze descends on Kenny Park and Anton Rye for the final few minutes here. It's Cork's free. It's dropped in around the house. It's gone out to the left hand side again. How many of those for Cork have gone out there? Four nine 14 wides Imelda and uh, we did talk about it at the start of the second half as they were accumulating for Cork that this could come back to bite them and right now they're four points down we've got three and a half minutes to go here there's still time for Cork but you know they put themselves in this position themselves oh yeah and it's, I suppose it's very unfortunate for Cork on the place balls not to be getting them over you know that's your chance to get a score and they're just missing those and you know the, the, it looks like they're going to pay for this at the end of the game Carrie Dolan grabs the ball for Galway but the delivery not uh, 
won by the uh, Galway forwards inside Shannon Corkin trying to do a bit of pressure on the Cork defence which results in the ball going over to the far side to the goalkeeper who made herself available and a long delivery down the far side of the field out to come and try and get to there is Sorica McCartan now Cork are in for an opportunity here Katrina Mackey going for a point from a really difficult angle picked up there by Fiona Ryan the uh, Galway goalkeeper from Ballandarian Club out it comes to Roisin Black the old more married girl to Mullias Sarah Durvin and Sarah Durvin gets it towards Ballandarian's Emma Hellebert Galway now trying to uh, finish the game in the flurry here but it's a bad delivery picked up easily there by Maeve Cahalan from St Finbars we've got about two and a half minutes to go on the clock here it's going to be a free for Cork in the middle of the field and they'll now go we want to bring in another substitute as well Neve McPeak from the Lee Mellows Club is going to be brought in and going off is Sabina Rabbit from the home club Athen Rye here in Galway so might have met, met it, left it late Cahal Murray the Galway manager to bring in a few substitutions but they need them now Oh absolutely you know and in fairness to any of the girls that's coming off here it's not because they're putting in a poor performance it's probably actually the opposite it's because they've given all they can and they're trying to bring in new players Cork are doing the very same thing as well you know the conditions here is, is, it's so warm here there's a lot of extra time being played and I suppose now they just need fresh legs Red card as well for Aoife Dunahu for a second yellow so Galway down to 14 at the very end here of which we've got about two minutes to go so Galway just to need to restructure a bit Cork need to bring in another substitute from Black Rock Hayley Ryan after this free the free this time is taken by Saoirse McCarthy she's going to drop it in around the house that's a dangerous ball could end up anywhere in there if a Cork player were to pull on that ball the opportunity pushed out to the side a little bit for the moment and Jervla Higgins picks it up for Galway inside in her own 14 metre line trying to come away with it very close to the sideline still going forward oh she's able to tackle there the referee's given a free in to Cork strange decision but um, Cork wanted to make in the substitution they want to bring in number 24 so Dervla Higgins was coming out with the ball flicked the ball away and uh, how Ray Kelly could f really see a foul there by either player two players just meeting in the heat of the battle from our vantage point but the upshot of it all is here with a minute to go on the added on time it's going to be a free in for Cork Katrina Mackey standing right on the sideline for this free, about 24 metres out from the post. Very difficult angle. Cork have only scored one point in the second half. How they could do with another major right now as uh, Katrina Mackey steps over this one, strikes it in. That's a very good free by Katrina Mackey. She puts that one high and over the bar. She's the only scorer for Cork in the second half and two of them have been from frees. So 1-12 to 12 points. A deep into stop, added on time here now. So Cork really do need a goal to get Anton out of this we're in the final few seconds uh, if you're Cahal Murray I'm saying to, to say to Fiona Ryan to drive that ball as long as you can down the field puck out battle for down here Cork probably should win this one from the uh, resulting breaking ball Emma Murphy now tries to put it in the ball and out over the sideline down in front of us sideline ball to Galway there's a referee being asked about the tackle from Matthew Toomey and the Cork backroom team one twelve to 12 points. Liz Dempsey, the lines person down in front of us as well. Galway want to bring in another substitute. Alana Kelly from Portumna, number 21, is going to come in in place of Sarah Spellman of Sarsfields. So Cork, having led by three at half time, find themselves three points down now. The sideline ball will be for Galway. And we are gone into the eighth minute of added on time. We were told we would have seven, but... There's been a couple of stoppages in there as well. Galway's goal coming from Siobhan McGrath. Five minutes from the end of normal time is the referee going to blow the full-time whistle. No, he's going to give a free to Cork. Now, Cork have an opportunity to drop this ball in around the house. Last chance saloon for Cork. In it goes. Up to go for it. Ball breaks inside. Carrie Dolan is back there for Galway. Sarah Durvin trying to get it out as well. The result of this chamazel we'll probably decide what way things are going to go here's a chance for Katrina Mackey bearing down on goal, still going forward sees a pop pass inside an opportunity for Chloe Sigerson. sees the ball go out to the left hand side and wide Cork very unlucky not to get a free there if we look back yeah. on that replay once again they look to have been a tackle down across Katrina Mackey which on another, any other given day the referee Ray Kelly is going to blow the final whistle it's all over here one twelve for Galway, 12 points for Cork. 
couple of the Galway management and Cork management team getting to know each other a little bit better as the pitch is invaded by um, young Camogie enthusiasts over on the far side. But Amelda, in the end, Galway's experience in the second half in particular saw them over the line in this game. And as you said earlier and alluded to, there's never much between Galway and Cork, and so it was today. That goal. The touch in by Siobhan Gardner, finished to the net by Siobhan McGrath in the end, proving to be the difference between the sides. Yeah, and in fairness, I suppose to Galway, they did, while they were playing poorly in the first half, I suppose they just kept the scores coming, any opportunity they can. Cork have to be disappointed. You know, they absolutely dominated most of this game, and, and yet I suppose to come away at the losing end of this. You know, but in fairness, you know, they had a lot of misses, and when you have misses like that, I suppose, you know, it is going to affect the end result. But, you know, fair play to Galway. They kept plugging along, taking the scores when they could, made hard work of it for sure. But at the end of the day, a win is a win, and they've come off now with a win in the first round of the championship. So, well done to Galway. Well done to Galway. Commissioners to Cork, who owned the first half 100%, led by 10 points to 7, but by far the better team. Probably yeah. should have been 6 or 7 points up at half time, and that would have made it very difficult for Galway. Cork didn't score until the 20th minute of the second half. They're wide after wide after wide. You know, from a lot of them were from place balls and not from long distance or difficult angles, but just couldn't judge whatever little bit of breeze was into that goal at the dressing room end here. Whereas Galway went about their business in the second half far more, you know, up. The rustiness had gone out of them. They needed that first 35, 37 minutes just to get going into this game. And the goal, again, alluded to. And I suppose the, you know, the general play and the point scoring from freeze of... Uh, Carrie Dolan was absolutely. huge for Galway again today. Oh, absolutely. In fairness to Carrie, Carrie Dolan, I think she kind of carried Galway in it and you know, kept getting the freeze or her points when were rightly needed for Galway. And I think, it's, just to mention as well, Galway full back, I think, very, very strong. Roisin Black in particular there. Player of the match, Imelda, uh, we'll always love giving this job to you. Uh, notable performances on the Cork team and on the Galway team, but I think you've single, singled out one there probably for special mention. Yeah, and in fairness, I suppose to Katrina Mackey, you have to say, like, put a huge performance in for Cork, and I, but I suppose it was, it was down to Galway's win today, and it was, I think a lot of it was to the hard work indeed of, the, on the freeze, and indeed off the freeze, and her game of play with Carrie Dolan, who worked hard, hard to stay all through, and I suppose, in fairness to her, you know, kept Galway plugging along, so. I would give player of the match to Carrie Dolan. So the Glenn Demplex player of the match in today's game is Carrie Dolan of Galway, finishing with eight points for her side. My sincere thanks to Amelda Hobbins, as always on co-commentary, to Dave and the lads back here as well. It's uh, finished in a win for the home side here in Kenny Park and Athen Ryan, round one of the Glenn Demplex Senior all Ireland Camogie Championship. The final score, Galway won 12, Cork 12 points.
One, two. Kahal. Kahal. Now I'm delighted to be joined by the Glen Dimplex player of the match, Carrie Dolan. Congratulations, eight points in the end, but more importantly, a victory over Cork in the first round of the championship. Yeah, victory is, is the most important thing, the thing we came here for today. Um, I suppose first half, very poor on our behalf, not what we wanted to do, you know, training was going well. And I suppose with, we were lucky to be three points down at half time, to be honest. And look, we said we were lucky coming in, but only be three points down if we go out in the second half. And look, work hard and, and, and just try to get points in the board. And if we get one up on them, then we'll shove on. You restricted them to just two points in the second half as well, which is crucial because they were very much the dominant team in the first half. You could tell that they had played in the Munster Championship. You probably didn't have that type of competitive game either. So, as you rightly said, you know, not happy with the first half, but far better in the second half. Yeah, look, it's still a lot, a lot of improvements, to be honest. Look, at they've they probably missed a couple of frees there that they'd be disappointed with. Um, but I suppose, look, we, we're very happy that we shoved on in that second half and you know, got a foothold in the game. If, uh, two weeks of a break now but uh, the match has come thick and fast as well Clare in the next round who defeated down today so I suppose you go away now regroup and get ready for that one Yeah as always Cork was our focus now and look we'll, in, we'll enjoy tonight or whatever and I think we're back training Monday night and our, our focus will shift to Clare then Well Gary congratulations you are the Glim Dimplex uh, player of the match in today's Camogie Championship game well done congratulations Thanks Tommy Thank you Delighted to be joined by Galway manager Carl Murray. Congratulations, uh, Carl, uh, in the end of three point victory, but uh, you were made work all the way for that one. Oh, we were made work all the way, yeah. Look at, um, you know, Cork had us all over the place, six and sevens in the first half, and to be honest, they probably didn't take their chances, and they'll probably be disappointed going home with a loss, to be straight about it. They were the better team, and, and we certainly got out of jail. We've an awful lot of learnings, um, an awful lot to, to, to work on, an awful lot to improve on, but at the same time, you know, we said at half time, you know, we needed to show a bit of heart, and we needed to to start, you know, get the work right up and get the, get the tackles in and um, in fairness we did that in the second half and you'd have to be proud of the girls for that. Cork looked like they came into this game, you know, I won't say more up for it but the, the fact that they had tough championship games in their own provincial series in Munster and you did say to us before you can't beat those type of games especially with the seven week break since the league final. Yeah, listen, it's, it's, it's hard. Look at, 
that's something the association is going to have to look at because you know we, we had a seven week break there leading to the championship that's not the same for everyone and um, it would have been 10 weeks if we didn't get to the league final so you know that is hard to manage and it's, it's given us a, it's a huge disadvantage to us but at the same time you know there's only one game against Waterford so we can't be using that as an excuse either or a coach to you know um, look we just weren't at the pace of it they, 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 they played a sweeper and they had a, they had a serious platform in their half back line and we just we just didn't work hard enough we didn't track our runners and um, you know that's that's on God we like to be honest with you that's, that's not something that we're you know we're always proud of the work right we're always proud of the, of the way we work in the field and, and, and our attitude on that you know it just wasn't there in the first half but look thankfully we, we, we spoke about it at half time in fairness the girls knew themselves that, that you know it wasn't it wasn't good enough and, and in fairness in the second half they were a way better team worked not incredibly hard and um you know, some great scores there near the finish, especially, you know, into, that was a strong breeze, so it was really good to get them scores. Restricted them too as well to two points in the second half. I know they, they tally somewhere in the region of 14 wides, which was, suggests that they were creating chances, but, uh, you know, to show a great character there in the end, to come back and hold on, you know, Cork were throwing everything they had at you towards the finish. Yeah, Cork were throwing everything. Look at it, it was probably, it was a strong breeze there, it was probably hard to play into them, them goals there, like, but, um, yeah, they certainly had a lot of wides, so, you know, we're not going to, you know, that, that's, that's, that's for definite, we can't run away from that statistic. Um, look at they created an awful lot of chances and that's something we're going to have to look at because um, you know but at the same time it's it's the first round of the championship you know you're not you don't need to be going flat out at that you know it's about improving in, incrementally all the time and um, look we're happy to win but huge amount to improve well look well done today congratulations um, a three point victory in the end Carl thanks for talking to us alright thanks Tommy Matthew, to me, uh, commiserations. Uh, 
you did everything that you could. Second half, probably not as good as the first half. Ultimately, a number of wides then that racked up in the end probably cost you. Absolutely, that's, that's, the, that's the difference between the two teams. I think, I think the stats that we had, that we dominated the game with chances and all that, but our conversion rate again was just, you know, it's not good enough. Two points in the second half, 13, 14 wise, not good enough, like, you know. Um, I suppose we said coming up here, winning the game wasn't going to win in all Ireland or losing the game was going to lose in all Ireland so like you know we're, we're, we're the same place where we were even going home if we won the game we still have to be done we still have to be clear so like it's, it's still a lot to play for like but you know they're a great side um, we got one chance to sniff of a goal and, and took it like and do you know that's the difference unfortunately today you mentioned the goal Galway got it it was flicked in in the end I think by Siobhan McGrath but you had a couple of goal chances yourselves in the first half or opportunities to go for goals or whatever it didn't happen you were leading by 10 points to 7 you by far the better team in the first half you came out of the blocks absolutely flying it here today I think you caught Galway on the hop as well but uh, you know just seeing out that game there's so many great battles between Galway and Cork never much in it no 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 but I, I, I suppose at, at this, this stage you know, for the last few years God we're getting the, 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 the rub of the green or the beating us anyway whatever the rub of the green but that's um, yeah. Look, a great game, and we we did come out um, all cylinders belting like. But um, I suppose the, the one, one of my main threats up in the forward line were, were Katrina Mackey. Like I thought she was very very good today, but like, her, like she's only played twenty minutes all year. So you know when she got the opportunity, normally she'd take it on. But I'd say just you know she took the easy or not the easy option, the softer option, going for a pint. But look, we just have to go away now again and choose a night and, and and see where we're at with this again. Like you know and, and get prepared for the down game. Yeah, of course, you mentioned down. They play Clare today. Clare beat them, and you have to play the two of them, same as Galway have. So, I mean, this championship is only beginning. As you so rightly said, it's not the end. If you won or lost today, wasn't going to win in our Ireland. No, yeah, like I suppose the way we are now, from here on in, we're a knockout. Like, you know, so we have to be down. If we don't, we're out. If we have to be clear, if we don't, we're out. So that's the way it is now, I suppose. Looking, it'll put us under a small bit more pressure. Like, we're just trying to nurse a few injuries as well. Now, see how they go, like, and try and get as many as we can back into the fray. But, Look, we've no complaints today. Look, um, it's just our, our conversion rate was shocking. Um, so no, that's that's where we have to work on again. That's you. Great to talk to you as always. Safe journey back to Cork and uh, best luck in the rest of the championship. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Matthew.